Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here from uh, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And today I've got yet another review for you of another 24th scale kit that I've added to my arsenal. Um, I ordered this a while back from uh, Antics and I had a phone call today to say it was in. So I went straight over and picked it up and I've literally, well, I just came back, walked the dog and now I'm doing a review for you. So um, yeah, it's tea time on Monday. Um, I saw a review, uh, Phil Flory did this a while ago and I like the kit very much. It is very, very simple. It's very basic compared to the likes of the Airfix Hellcat or the Airfix um, Typhoon. So it's not quite in the same world. It's got a bit of a history to it. You can see it's in a kinetic box. It was originally done by a company I can't remember the name of now. Um, but um, yeah, they did a, a couple of P40s as well and then just disappeared. So now this kit has reappeared, but as a razor buck in the um, in the kinetic box. So on the front of the box, we can see here it's uh, 24 scale. It's 458 millimeters long. It's 518 millimeters wingspan, and it's 250 plus parts, which is nothing for a 24 scale fighter kit. I mean, the the Hellcat is probably near that in the engine and the cockpit alone. So um, I plan to build this when I finish the Hellcat. So it'll probably be built alongside the Thunderbolt, the Thunderbolt, the <laughs> the um, Typhoon. So so when we're doing the the uh, the, the um, build along on that one. So basically, this kit has been around a few years now. I'll have a look around the box first. And um, what we've got here, we can see that um, we can build it as we've got Miss Mutt, or we can build it as Squirt Two. Now I haven't looked yet. I'm sure there's going to be other um, decals out there on the market for it um, but this one looks especially good with the invasion stripes and everything um, quite an interesting history to this aircraft it could carry two and a half thousand pounds of bombs when you consider a b-17 could only carry four thousand eight hundred it's quite amazing but then when you consider an f4u corsair could carry four thousand yeah but this was the it says here the largest heaviest and most expensive fighter aircraft in history to be powered by a single piston engine um I'm just thinking, wasn't the Sky Raider bigger than this? I don't know. So maybe that's incorrect. Maybe it's correct. And then go on the other side of the box, we just got another image. And on the end of the box, we can see the kit number, which is K3208. So I haven't even lifted the lid on this yet. But um, you can see it's a very, very weird shaped box indeed. Um, so let's take the top off and look what's inside. And there we go. We've got lots and lots of plastic and the box is literally crammed full. And um, because I've seen the floor floor review, I'm not going to act surprised or anything. But yes, we've got the spine part here for a bubble top. Um, but I think this part is only included in the kit because they're giving you the ailerons. More of that in a minute. So what have we got in here? We've got, um, let me get this box top up here. So we've got one, two, three, and there's a few large halves, four, five, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 21, 22, 23, 24, resin, it's a bit strange, we'll look at those in a minute, and then uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28 screws, 29, there's another clear one there, so there we go, and then we've got a lovely big decal sheet and an instruction manual, so let's get all this out of the way, and let's uh, get the camera a bit closer, and we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals. Okay, so I'm filming this in 1080p 30 frames a second, so uh, just the instructions bit so you get a bit of a clearer view of the instructions. You all seem to love it. Um, and I'll film the rest of it in 720 and upload it in 1080. Let's see what happens. Now, basically, uh, this is a very, very simple instruction book. It is only 12 pages. Um, when you consider the, the Airfix manuals for their kits, it's, uh, it's very, very simple. But what we have got on here is a nice... Um, paints call out so we've got Vallejo 
Ammo by Mig, Italeri, um, GSI Creos, that's Mr. Color, that's there. That's not the watercolor bait colors, that's the, um, that's their uh, solvent paints, you know, the lacquer paints. Um, then we've got Humbrun Enamels, and then we've got Tamiya on the end there. So it would have been nice if they'd given us some off FS colors, but um, when I build this thing, you'll see then. So going in, we've got a sprue call out with all our basic sprues on there. Um, I can't wait to look at those tires. Now here we're looking at the uh, the cockpit assembly, which looks fairly simple um, for a 24 scale kit. But then you've got things like this with the separate throttle quadrants, which make things a lot nicer. And our um, our gun aiming uh, apparatus there is uh, gun aiming sight is some um, is good as well. So. We'll have a look at those plastic parts in a minute. Then we move on to the engine. Now the engine also looks like a fairly simple affair. Um, certainly not as involved as the Airfix kit, but uh, maybe the only difference is, is these aren't in halves. But uh, we'll have a look and see if we can use my um, rocker covers on this, because it's the same engine, so we should be able to. And then we're going to go on and add in the air intakes and the coolers and everything. And then we've got our exhaust here on the back so it looks like the engine is going to actually mount on the exhaust so uh, I'm not quite sure what that there is that's obviously some sort of fresh air intake um, then we're moving along here and we're going to add the engine to the bulkhead we've got the gearbox or the supercharger and stuff going on the back and then uh, adding the the air intake at the bottom there Then we've got the relevant oil tanks and everything here and water tank I would imagine that's an oil tank and that's a water tank it probably had water injection I don't know but it probably did um, and then the engine mounting and everything going on there and then straight over the page see we're on, we're on step four and we're putting it all in the fuselage and closing the fuselage up uh, now I think you'll find that with the airfix kit that's probably about step 30 <laughs> I don't know um, and there we go then we're going to start adding on the tailplanes and the looks like the single piece tailplane still and adding on the canopy there and a few bits and pieces this is the tail wheel assembly there, which is going to go in. And then we've got the uh, the flat drop tank there going on. And looks like we're adding undercarriage doors there. A bit strange. Um, it's a bit of a weird assembly sequence. Then if you look at my, uh, my Bronco build, you'll see that I don't mind changing things. And then moving on, we've got the paper tanks here. We've got our gun bays with our machine guns. We've got some rockets here, which are a very simple affair by the look of it. And we've got drop tank and bombs options undercarriage legs not sure if these need metal or not we'll have a look at that then we've got our flaps and it looks like you may be able to have them down or up i'm not sure we'll have a look at that um some of this we'll probably won't even know until we come to build it then we've got the same on the other side here but this time in this wing we actually get the ammo bays as well so if you want to do it all opened up you can not sure what's available on the market as far as detail sets go. I know Airscale do a instrument panel for it, so um, that's in the post. So I'm looking forward to receiving that. And you'll get a review of that as soon as I get it. Um, but there, there we go. And then final assembly is putting the wings on. So I think you change that assembly around a little bit. Uh, prop options should be related to the specific paint schemes. So you've got different props for different paint schemes there's four different pr props by the look of it so you've got that one there is split out on its own and then here you've got three separate ones so be interesting to see what's available and also these are Duxford base French number 80 French number 23 so it looks like maybe those props are available or um, are there for the different schemes that were available in the uh, Vintage Fighter series. That was the name of the company, Vintage Fighter, there we go. Um, so yeah, it looks like with this one, you're only going to use uh, one particular prop. I have to find out which one that is. And then here we've got the uh, very simple black and white colour callouts and decal placements. No real stencil data or anything, not even sure if this had it. And then we've got the one there, we've got Squirt 2 with our lovely invasion stripes and everything on it. So uh, yeah, really, really nice looking model. It's going to be a monster and it's going to be very, very impressive. So let me uh, get this away and we'll have a look at some sprues. Oh, sorry, we're going to look at the decals, weren't we? Where have they gone? Here they are. Let's have a look at these decals. They look very nice and they're all scratched to hell. 
Um, and where Phil Freud did a review of this, he thought that maybe somebody had signed their name. But I think it's where the sprues have been on it moving around. It's a shame they don't think to put them in the box the other way up. But um, crazy. Um, so we've got, these are the decals for Squirt 2. Very nice with our stars and bars. And then we've got Pride of Lodi, Ohio. Miss Mutt. So that all goes. That was um, Lieutenant Colonel Robert R. Rowland, and this was Lieutenant R. H. Parker. So we've also got here some different names there as well. And then we've got our generic stencil data here. We've got some prop stencil there, and then some other bits and pieces here which you can read all of it. So I'll just give you give you a quick run round of that sheet. there you go so let's have a look at some plastic all right guys back to 720 now so starting off with the kit we've got the rusty bags I'm sorry but I don't want to keep stopping and starting um, the big advantage of these bags of course is you can reseal them the big big advantage is they're really brittle and they just tear open so it looks like this kit's had a bit of a hard time sometime in its life so in here I need to be really careful with some of this stuff because there's a lot of stuff which is two or three of them so we've got the main fuselage halves here and we can see that we've got some lovely detail on there um it's, it's it's very very smooth but it's got that textured finish um which on this isn't such a problem at the moment i'm putting a video together for the hellcat how to get a decent finish on it because obviously if it's going to be glossy blue it needs to be glossy not uh, not motley but um yeah we've got some massive location pins on here and some huge holes but if you notice, there's no sink marks around them, which is really nice. So um, that's well thought out by Kinetic. Thank you. I'm not sure if Vintage Fighter Series did this fuselage or if this is Kinetic. I don't know. I don't remember Kinetic ever do um, Vintage Fighter Series doing a Razorback. But it goes together nice. Oh, we have got a sink mark there. Look. But it goes together quite nicely. And you can see it's a big old bird. Um, I'm going to rip that bit of sprue off of there while I'm here because that looks like that's a candidate for getting snapped off and ripping off the cockpit wall out. So I'll cut that off. To give you an idea of size. I've got my Hellcat here and you can see now just how big this thing is. If I put them like that you can see the size of the P47. I mean it's if, if we add the rudder to the Hellcat we haven't really got a lot of difference between the Back of the cockpit and the back of the plane but when you actually start to look at all this on the front i think the p47 is going to be a lot bigger um is it fatter i don't know in fact do you know what there's not much size difference in it. i've got the wings here as well so we'll have a look at those in a minute so there's our fuselage halves now i'm going to put these back in the bag so they don't get damaged but quite how much that's going to help i don't know but um put them there for now now these two sprues here these are very very chunky sprues they're massive and you can see where they've cut them off to get them into that strange size box so this is the um, head armor which is again quite chunky and toy like but there's no problem you can add stuff to it um, there's our instrument panel I think there's about three or four different instrument panels in this kit so I'll have to have a look and see what's going on there um, there we go and we've got our magnetos there which look quite simple some access panels and some other bits and pieces for this side. Yeah, there's an antenna there. So yeah, that's those two sprues. They can go back in that bag. Then moving on here, we've got this. I won't bother getting this one out. This is the actual um, the uh, P47 uh, bubble top spine, and with that one, you got the separate rudder. So yeah, strange. Here we've got the ailerons, and we can see we've got some lovely rivet detail on them. Um, but unfortunately the way it works, when you actually look at the wings, the top of the aileron is moulded with the wing, and the bottom is separate. So you'll get that look along there, with the, along here with the separate part, sorry, along there with the separate part, but you won't 
get the same look on the top. So if we have a look at the actual wings themselves, as I say, sorry about these rusty bags, but I'm sure oh, there, is, there is a tiny seam there. Probably getting the bottom out, we'll just get the top out and have a look. And you can see that on the top you've got the, the detail there, so it wouldn't be too much of trouble to, to actually score through there and cut that off. But um, yeah, on the top you get the, the aileron is one, and on the bottom it's separate. So God only knows why they did that. Very strange. We've also got some witness of the, the mould seams coming through, and I'm going to do the same here and cut that off there. And when I say mould seams, I don't mean mould seams, I mean um where the actual mould, where we've got detail on the back, it's caused shriek marks on this side. So, um, but you know, it's, it's neither here nor there. Got some pretty rough detail in there, but it's detail nonetheless. Um, this kit is actually, I paid a very good price for it. It's about 95 or 100 pounds, I think. I was, um, I was really chuffed with the price I paid. So there we go. And just to give you an idea of size, here's a Hellcat wing alongside it. And again, they're pretty much the same. So, you know, largest and heaviest fighter aircraft, was it? Not really sure. I'm sure the Cor Corsair is a lot bigger. And then we've got the same here as the other side of the wings, and this time we've got the cutout in there for the, for the ammo bays. And here we've got another bag with a million propellers in it. I'm going to be making some noise, I'm sorry. There we go. So we've got those two sprues there. So we've got these different propellers. And these, you can see there's three, three propellers with cuffs on and one which is uncuffed. So we have to work out which one we need. Um, we've got our spars here by the look of it if you compare that detail with what you get in the typhoon yeah it's a bit simple but i have seen this built many years ago and it is beautiful when it's built it really is does have a big i love the way thunderbolts stand on their undercarriage much like typhoons with the stood there with the wheels facing and they're beautiful um so yeah the, with all these different propellers research is needed there guys to see which one you actually need then we've got our Combings there for the guns, so they're going to take some work uh, to probably probably get some aftermarket gun barrels for this one, or even turn some up myself on the lathe. The pylons here, they're in separate halves, and we've got gear bay doors there, and it looks like, or I hope, we're going to get some internal detail. I hope that's not it. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then we've got some more gear bay doors there. And they've got detail on both sides. No ejector pin marks, which is really nice. And some sort of gun access panel there. So that's really cool. So that can go down there. And then we've got another bag here, which has got some nice looking detailing parts in it. Let's have a look at these. So we've got here, we've got our cockpit floor. Which has got some nice raised detail. It's very sharp. You almost cut your finger on those rivets. Uh, we've got exhaust pipes here, which they stood. The, I thought they might have got damaged, but they haven't. And then some more there, and they all look good. Bulkhead there. Um, ejector pin marks in the back. So obviously these here are supposed to be there. And uh, yeah, all in all, very nice. And we've got the front cover for the engine, which looks a little simple to me. Uh, what I may do for this is make a resin copy of the Airfix one and put that on instead. I think this would have had the same magnetos. I'll have to check. So yeah, all in all, nice. It's all there anyway. And then here we've got push rods. Got the same sort of assembly sequence as the engine. Got some lovely radiated um, fin fin detail on there, which is, if anything, it's probably nicer than the Airfix kit. But all the shapes are wrong. It's it's awful. Um, it is nothing like a right, like an R two eight hundred at all. It is if you compare this in fact hang on a second okay it's not so much a back-to-back -back sort of um 
comparison of the two kits but certainly it is a back-to-back -back comparison of the engines because this engine is not simple this is the airfix engine it's by no means perfect um, there's got quite a few issues but you can see I've made these rocker covers that go on and the balance pipes because um, the airfix ones are a bit sort of simple and also you've got a seam right across them so you can see I removed them here and then I put these resin ones on now at least the big advantage with this one is you've got these cylinders are in one piece so there's no messing around with seams or anything however if you look at the detail on there it's um it's non-existent and incorrect so um probably what are these engines in this kit would make a big difference but having said that this all looks a lot smaller so it may not fit inside the cowl so <laughs> we'll have to have a look at that in a minute if we can if we can come to the cowl um but certainly the fin detail on it is very nice but it's all incorrect so yeah it's a bit like having beautiful planking detail on a model ship but it goes the wrong way <laughs> um so yeah and as you can see the the actual front cover detail is very simplistic compared to the compared to the airfix parts very simplistic indeed so i think at a minimum needs a bit of work but then I don't know how much you can actually see about I think on the Thunderbolt you can actually see quite a bit so we'll have to have a look at that we'll have a look when I build it and uh, obviously I've got these I can take resin copies off if I need to but um yeah a bit simplistic there I'm afraid it's uh, a bit disappointing to be honest um, because radial engines on World War II fighters are a big part of the uh, big part of the scheme of things so what we've got here, so we've got some more cockpit parts here. So we've got cockpit side walls here, which look fairly sort of simple, but so easy to dress up because they're so they're just flat. They're so easy to do. Uh, we've got intake pipes here by the look of it, which when you compare them to the Airfix ones, they look a lot different so i don't know and then we've got machine gun breaches there which look to be very nice actually I'm not sure about accuracy but they're they're certainly very crisp and sharp if you give you a close-up on them so yeah they're, they're they look nicer than the airfix ones to me somehow but uh, we'll see and then we've got our ammo belts there with the uh very simplistic bullet detail in there so there we go um, that's that one sprue I build up a lovely pile of um, bags and sprues next to me and then it's going to be a game of getting all back in while this is editing okay so we've got uh, three sprues in here very chunky indeed um, so these are our flaps so we get separate flaps and that's about it you don't get separate ailerons you don't get a separate rudder and you don't get separate elevators so you get flat, uh, flaps and that's about it lovely detail on there some nice fine rivet detail it's all there it's all sharp it's all straight doesn't run off or just disappear so yeah that's very nice and then here we've got our rocket launchers those straps look quite nice but you can do with a bit more detail we have to have a play with those and then we've got our bombs now i'm assuming these are going to be 500 pound bombs smaller of the two is it 250 and 500 or 500 and a thousand i can't remember now so whatever these are they're bombs <laughs> um again if you're building the airfix kit and you're not bombing it out maybe the bombs in that would be nicer and there's our wheels oh dear oh dear 24 scale guys it's not good enough really not good enough so there we go that's that little bunch of screws I am going to see if I can get this one back in the bag there we go okay so here we go now with now this is what I was saying earlier but it's getting confusing we saw we saw a few moments ago I showed you a picture of the armor for the pilot and then here again we've got 
armor for the pilots. Oh, I don't quite know what's going on here. Um, and then we've got, please don't tell me that's our machine gun barrels, please. That's something I'd expect to see in a 70 second scale kit, not 24. And then we've got our gun bays there, which look quite nice. When you, again, when you compare them to the Airfix kit, not a patch. But I suppose this is a lot older. Um, and it is cheaper. Looks like we've got some cover detail for the magnetos there, perhaps. Some other bits and pieces. And then there's the, uh, the ring going around the rear of the engine there. Right, onto some big stuff now, and you can see this is quite massive. This is our great big flat and drop tank. Now I'm not sure if it's correct or not, it's got no surface detail on at all. I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. Uh, there's our tail wheel, which looks awful. Um, there's our exhaust there yes uh mm, flaps in the closed position cowl flaps and that looks like the tail wheel no that's some um, parts broken off the sprue like they should be like that so there we go that's um a bit disappointing really i mean if that's how it's supposed to be then fine but the rest of this is all a bit the really <laughs> the 24 scale and then we've got our tail planes. Now I could have sworn they showed them in the instructions as one piece. And I do remember that Vintage Fighter Series made the tail planes in one piece. And I think everyone complained because they had shrink marks in them or something. So here we go. Um, there's our tail wheel doors there. Undercarriage legs. No moulded on brake line detail, which is cool. Uh, not sure. I think that's accurate actuators for the, uh, for the flaps. So there we go big strong undercarriage legs the fact that they're vertical practically may mean they'll be okay so we'll see if i can always drill through them put some rod in or maybe there's some metal ones out there but not white metal ones thank you very much I'm getting near the end now and here again as i said earlier God, that's heavy really heavy that's like a 48 scale kit there um lovely detail on that bulkhead if, if it's correct it's beautiful really really nice um and then we've got the cockpit floor there which again is beautifully detailed i believe this was all corrugated so it's it's a minefield for your chipping and stuff it would have been bronze green and we've got a pilot seat there which looks a little simple to be honest maybe um maybe we could take a mold off the uh, fix kit um something i'm not sure what that is part of the engine cowling there and it's got internal detail as well and we'll give you a close-up on this so got rudder pedals there as well there we go And then this is the last lot of grey screws. Can you imagine the noise in this factory? Everybody's doing this. Oh, must be deafening. Right, so this is lots of little sprues. We've got two here the same. And these are our paper drop tanks. And they're very crisply moulded. Um, Now that's strange, you'd think that's a mirrored sprue, wouldn't you? But they're not. There are differences in them. And I don't know what they are. This one's F3, this one's F4. So I can't see any difference there. Very strange. Uh, so yeah, there's our paper drop tanks with some nice detail on them. And we've got our ordinary metal drop tank. 
this is our center line drop tank I believe not mistaken and again we've got f5 and f6 and they look to be the same which is very strange okay so that's those there and then here we've got a rudder with part of the fuselage on it and there's the other part of the fuselage so it could be that you could actually use this I'm not sure if you could use this correctly or not on the on the Razorback but um it could be you could cut that rudder off that fuselage and use this one instead because I think really on 24 scale you need to have those those gaps between the control surfaces and here we've got our multitude of spinners if you can call them that um, another antenna there some bits and pieces there some bits of detail probably for the cockpit we've got hangers for our drop tanks there yeah all in all it's all there we've got our levers and everything here which is nice that's really funny they've gone to all the trouble of making all those lovely levers and there's the sort of um the paddle they go into but then they got stuff like you know the engine's really really simple just very strange so I'll put those over there for now now this is a bit strange you look at these wheels and you'd think they're resin and the inner face of the wheel is molded in they're not resin they're vinyl they're actually flexible so I don't know if it's a flexible type of resin or what it is I don't know the tread pattern looks nice accuracy I don't know but it looks nice it's certainly not nicer than the airfix kit um, in fact it could be that maybe you could buy some resin wheels for this and use these tires on the airfix kit so uh, yeah very strange and then last but not least we have two clear screws and I won't bother getting this one out this is basically a pair of clear gun bay doors so if you want to have your gun bays um, see-through sort of thing you can put these doors on the top the other thing these have got the detail in the back side I don't think I don't remember seeing the detail on the back side of the plane doors the uh, grey plastic doors so you pay your money it takes your choice with those and then here we've got the clear parts now I did have a quick look when I got these out And there we go they are lovely there's a little bit of distortion but it's the windscreen we're interested in more than anything because with this we'll probably have the canopy open but, uh, yeah we can see I'll give you a close-up Yeah, not bad at all. Really nice. And these, I believe, yes, you see there are another pair of gun bay doors, which are actually clear, total see-through. So you can have your gun bay doors in grey plastic, clear plastic, totally see-through, clear plastic, slightly opaque with internal detail, or grey plastic. So you pay your money, you take your choice. I mean, how many options do you need? Um, the rest of this clear sprue, we've got our wing, lights here landing lights I'm guessing uh, what's that a rear view mirror there's another type of rear view mirror there so yeah all sorts of head up display all sorts of bits and pieces on there so yeah all in all quite nice what would I give it 8 out of 10 um, I don't remember actually seeing a cowling in here hang on a second Sorry guys, I completely miss this sprue, I think. So I must have just taken it out of the bag and put it to one side. So yeah, we've got here again, remember I said we've got these lots of different parts. This is the instrument panel, and this is the instrument panel back. 
Now, I can't remember now, I'm not sure if a P47, you can see the back of the instrument panel through the canopy. I'm not sure, I think you can. So this would be great for adding detail and stuff. And as I say, I've got the air scale instrument panel coming, so that will really make the cockpit pop. Um, and then we've got another instrument panel there. So this kit comes with, well, three different instrument panels, if you like, because you've got this front, this back, then you've got this one. Now, does that go inside that one? I'm guessing it probably does. So I'm guessing you're supposed to paint that and that goes inside there. Did we get instrument panel decals? Yes, we did. So your options are open for this, whatever we want to do. We've got um, rear casing detail there for the engine. And then we've got the side cowls there. This is the lower and then there's an upper. So the cowl is all split up and every part has got the interior detail. Unfortunately, there's some injector pin marks in there, but hey, um, I'd rather they were the round injection part, injector pin marks in there than have those square type ones they use on edges and stuff of detail. So, and then we've got our detail in there for the guns, for the ammunition. See there. And then you've got an empty one there. So you've got the choice of having it fully armed or completely empty. So yeah, sorry, I missed that screw completely, guys. But um, it would be nice to see, you know, something as impressive as that in there rather than the, uh, the kit supplied engine. But we'll see if it'll fit. If it'll fit, I may well make a resin copy of this and use it in there. Or just even the front row of cylinders. That perhaps put the front row of cylinders and the front row front cover together and just pop that in as one. So um, anyway, there it has been. That is the kinetic p47d which is the vintage fighter series model um and thanks for watching if you've liked this video please like and subscribe um and i will see you all again soon with some more building work because i'm not going to be buying any more kits for a while now bye for now